Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this video tutorial, we are going to talk about the very first step of uh, signals plotting in MATLAB environment. In last tutorial, we have discussed and list the number of steps. And in this video tutorial, we are basically focusing on the very first step, and that is what time vector definition, right? When we say time vector, that, that means we are talking about the time interval for which we want to plot a signal. And in this mathematical definition, uh, we, we have already discussed it. This is x of t. So this is a signal x of t, which is function of time variable. And its definition is this one, or its value is this one. But this is the time vector, right? Or the interval for which this signal we are going to plot. Right. So why we call it vector? This is the first thing. So we know that in matrices, uh, we have rows and columns, right? But what is a vector? Vector is a special matrix in which either you have column or either you have uh, rows, right? So that is what a vector means, right? So for example, in case of this signal, time vector will have values starting from minus three and we will go to five. In between, we can define various values. For example, next value could be zero, right? Uh, then it could be three, and then it leads to five. So we have a vector or a matrix, right? It is a matrix, right? Having a values from minus three to five. Eventually, the, there are in total four values, right? So similarly, you can define time vector in MATLAB environment using some commands and that I'm going to uh, show you in this video tutorial. Okay, this is the MATLAB environment in which we are going to test the time vector. Okay, let's plot this interval. We know we can see that the signal is defined from minus three to five. So we are going to define a time vector which is start from minus three and goes to five and how you can do it in MATLAB we need to write simply, let's say t is a vector that you want to define. It's just a variable. Uh, it can be any other variable. So you define the starting point that is minus three colon and the ending point that is five, right? So the syntax is uh, the vector variable equals to the starting point and colon, then the ending point and you just press enter. So if you see the vector has been drawn and I'm, I'm going to show you, uh, you can see that this is your time vector. It has it has a starting value starting from minus three and it goes to plus five. And eventually the consecutive difference or the difference between the two consecutive value is point is basically one, right? Uh, so if one is interested to have a difference between the two values of 0.5, so you can change it, right? So for example, I want to have a difference. Uh, I want to start from minus three and want to go to plus five, but I want to have a difference of 0.5 in between two consecutive values. So how you can do it in between these two values, you just write 0.5 the, or the space that you want to create. So, and then colon, right? So if I'm going to write uh, the syntax that is going to be start point space, colon the end point right so that should be the uh, the basically syntax that i'm going to follow so that is why minus three colon 0. 0.5 and uh, five and then we have to just press what enter here so if you see now a new vector is shown and this time it is basically taking a bit uh, larger space uh, if you are observing it the values itself are divided into basically kind of they cannot be expressed in one uh, line in screen resolution. So they are taking two different uh, spaces. First values are basically from minus three to 4.5 and then last value, which was not displayed uh, in the first line. So basically it is displayed on the second line, but it is just one column because col there are 17 columns in this vector. So column one to 16 are shown in the first line and column uh, 17th column is basically shown in the second line, right? But you, one thing you can easily notice here that the first value was minus three and the last value is five, but the next consecutive values of minus three and minus 2.5. So the space between them is how much is 0. 0.5, which we were expecting, which we actually defined in the uh, command. You see, this is the command you have already written 0. 0.5. So the space between two consecutive value here, minus 0. 0.5 and zero. So the space is 0. 0.5, right? Here, one and 1.5. 
So this that's one thing. That's how you can actually define your time vector. I want to just explain one more thing before we go and uh, check the new command and finish this tutorial. So basically, uh, if you are going to plot a signal, let's say I'm going to draw something and I need to define certain values in time. That's what I'm doing here in this tutorial, right? So what is going to happen if you if your values of the time are basically quite far away? So what is going to happen? Your the resolution of the signal won't be good, right? For example, uh, if I'm going to plot signal any value, I'm, I'm not going to show you the value here exact, but if you see it, it will be very straight lines between the two points, consecutive points, right? So if you want to make this signal smooth, so what you can do here, you have to eventually, you want to make it smooth. That means you need uh, more points in uh, or very closer or denser points for uh, the short duration, right? For that purpose, you need very huge amount of number of points between the two endpoints of the interval, right? So in three, minus three, in between minus three and five, we need very huge number of points, right? So how you can do it? That means you have to reduce your uh, space, right? And there is a direct command for to do it. And that is basically what called line space, line space. And what is the syntax? You start the next uh, first point or the starting point, then comma five, the ending point and press enter. So you see huge number of points are generated. In fact, if you want to calculate it, so basically these are hundred columns are generated. So whenever you use this command without any number or you simply write ending point and a starting point in this command, so you're going to have hundred points and hundred points are more than enough. But sometimes you are dealing with very some uh, unique kind of signals for that even hundred points are less. So there is another command and I'm gonna show you so if I'm going to clear it again, just to show you guys. So basically CLC again and clear the screen. So what I'm going to do is line space, then starting point, which was minus three comma five. And the number of points I need to have in between them. And those are this, let's say I want to have hundred thousand points, right? So just press enter. And if you see here, look, the last row, which is shown here, is 99, 993 through 1,000 columns. So this, that means we have just generated 1,000 number of values, including minus 3 and 5, and in between them. That means you have done, uh, you have created a very dense time vector, and that will be wonderful for your, uh, uh, for your basically signal plotting, right? So in short, if I'm going to just summarize all the stuff, what you, what one can do, you simply write line space, right? Or first of all, time vector line space, right? Starting point, which was minus three in this example, five, the ending point. And if you do not write any number, that means your values will be generated around 100. But if you write something, for example, like 1000, so you can simply press the semicolon and it, it won't appear in your, in your screen. That means your result which will be stored in the D vector and would won't be shown on the screen. So, that, so I hope you have understand how to generate a time vector for a signal. And that's it from this tutorial. If you have any confusion uh, in generation of time vector, please post your queries in comment section. Thank you so much for listening.